Hey everybody, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, Daily Reflections with Chris. I'm Chris. For those of you who are new to this channel or maybe this is the first time tuning in, um, my name's Chris and I am on a journey to share my experience, strength and hope with you guys as it pertains to my recovery, my personal recovery from alcoholism, right? And recovery, you also hear stories of those around me who have also recovered or also recovering, right? And in five days, um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but in five days, uh, this channel will turn a year. So I'm very excited about that. I don't have uh, anything really uh, planned, being that, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous itself is it's anonymous. So it's really hard for me to get um, a guest on here. But if I can, if I can finagle somebody, then I surely will just to celebrate, right? To celebrate one year of doing this doing this daily reflections with chris doing it with you guys experience i mean those of you who have watched uh, every episode have have seen me go through some stuff right so i'm really grateful to be here with you today uh more than more than um more than i ex more than i can express like You know, sometimes I'm going through stuff and it's and it's and it's emotionally deep stuff, right? So my face takes a minute to even once even once I'm kind of coming out of it, my my face takes a little bit to to shine, but you know, I I'm in a good spot. I'm in a good place. Um a lot of decisions to be made. I'm not particularly ready for some, but But you gotta be made, man. I gotta man up. Don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, I've been watching. I've been watching also other podcasts that are really helping me heal through my journey. A uh, little, some intense work that I've been healing from. That I didn't stuff. You know, stuff that I thought I had already worked on, or that because I had talked about it, I was feeling better about it, and therefore I was better. But certain things kept showing up in my life, and and. And I'm learning still how to handle certain things, right? Especially now, since I, I want to move, I want to. I mean, I want to do different things in my life. I'm, you know, I got, I went back to dating, and uh, I still need, I need, I still need work. I mean, it's been fun. It's been really fun. I, re I really, I mean, I've really, really enjoyed it. I mean, to the point to where, like, I thought I was gonna get serious with somebody, and I still may. But, uh, let's read the topic today. I think it might have, uh, it might be an excellent thing to talk about, right? Instead of my woes or whatever, but let's, let's see, let's see what happens. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, let, let me read. I mean, I'm going to read and we'll see where it goes. So today's May the 18th and the entry for today is freedom to be me. If we are painstaking about this phase of our development, we will be amazed before we're halfway through. We are going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. And that's out of Alcoholics Anonymous, page 83. My first true freedom is the freedom not to have to take a drink today. Amen. If I truly want it, I will work the 12 steps and the happiness of this freedom will come to me through the steps. Sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. Other freedoms will follow, and inventorying them is a new happiness. I had a new freedom today, the freedom to be me. I have the freedom to be the best me I have ever been. My God. Ah! Touchy subject, right? <laughs> Actually, it's a good subject. It should be an exciting subject. It should be like, wow! I'm free now to be me, to be me as I am, to be me as I show up, to be me um, in my wardrobe, to be me in the way I, my glasses, to be me in how I carry myself, like truly, truly, the true me, the true me, the true me that I want to be, the best me that I've ever been. That person, man, I love that person. I love that person so much. That it's really hard when I can't be that person. It's hard for me. Because. Okay, let's just, let's just say an example, okay? 
today. I get off of work. You know, I'm, I'm like, okay, I need, I need to, uh, I need my medications, right? So kind of low on the funds. So I'm gonna go put in some extra hours, right? <coughs> and so I go and I, and I and I try to work and nothing pops up. I was out there for a whole hour, nothing and nothing. So I said, well, let me go see how much these medications are gonna cost. And, and I did, and I was like, okay, okay, cool. So now I know I have a number, right? So then I said, well, let me keep on trying. I said, you know what, I'm hungry. Let me go home and let me cook and I'm gonna eat. And, and so I cooked and I'm not like a real big cooker, right? So I cooked. And I made some, I don't know, for the, I guess if it was anything, it would be like a taco salad, right? So I made that and, and I washed the dishes and I sat down and watched a little bit of TV. Then I took a shower and then I think like, man, I love having that freedom. I love having the freedom that I could walk into my house and cook what I want to cook. Sit down if I want to sit down. Go take a shower if I want to get take a shower. Go go outside if I want to go outside. You know, I love that is a freedom that can be taken away from me easily. It was taken away from me like three year, three or four years ago, maybe five now, when I had a roommate. Uh, she was really like, man, she was like, I don't know what you, I don't know what you control issues or obsessive. I, I don't know what, what, what it is about her, but we never jived really. As long as I was doing what she wanted, she was cool. But she'd be like, hey, Chris, can you mow the lawn? I'd be like, yeah, yeah, heck yeah, I'll mow the lawn. But I'd be like taking off to go like go somewhere. So I couldn't mow the lawn at that moment. And then I, the next day would pass and then I would go to work. And then I would come home and she'd be mowing the lawn. I'd be like, hey, I thought I was gonna mow the lawn. And she was like, well, you take too long. What? <laughs> I said, okay, okay, well, she's retired, right? She ain't got nothing to do. So she mowed the lawn. I was like, all right. And it, and it just became like her pattern, like, Every time I was doing something, she would want me to do something else. And I said, okay, I'll gladly do it. But I wasn't going to stop everything I was doing to do that. I wasn't going to stop from going out to meet my friends to mow the lawn in that moment. So my freedom was 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 jeopardized. And it came to, it, it got worse. It came to the point where it, it, it um, you know, I no, I no longer had it. I was confined to, I, moved, I had to move all my furniture into my bedroom and just stay there. And I was like, man, I can't live it. Like, I mean, I can live like this, but I don't want to live like this. So did it cost me some money? Yes. But I, do I have to spend more money? Yes. But today I have that freedom. I have that freedom that because I'm not doing anything bad. I'm not getting drunk. I'm not getting high. I'm not, you know, doing, I'm not bringing people over to have sex with them, you know, like I'm, I feel like what I choose, what I choose to do with my life is like not harming to me or to anybody. If I want to cook something to eat, I should be able to anytime I want. If I want to watch TV, I should be able to anytime I want. And the truth is, I don't always want to watch TV and I don't always want to cook and I don't always want to be outside or, you know, sometimes I take a nap. Sometimes I'm working. Sometimes I'm working day and night because I got goals, I got ambitions, I got stuff I want to do. And, and and some of that stuff costs money, right? So so I, I have the freedom today that I never had was to work when it's time to work and to rest when it's time to rest. And I really like that. I love having that freedom and I thought that I had that freedom, you know, when I was drinking and drugging, I, I thought that, I thought that, that I had that freedom. I was like, man, I'm living my life. This is what we do. We're young. We're going to party. We're going to meet some people. We're going to have fun. We're going to dance. But that was never my story. My story wasn't like that. That's what I thought it was. But it wasn't. I would get drunk, go to bar, get off of work, go to bar, get drunk. 
probably have a good conversation with a couple of people, but the the more I drank, the drunker I got, and the drunker I got, the more the sloppier I got. I got real sloppy, and I would start fighting with people, and people would be like, oh, oh no. You know, people would be there for like a drink, and they would leave. I could never do that. People would go there for a couple of hours and leave. I could never do that. People would go and spend like, I said, say I'm gonna spend $10, and I, then they would leave. I couldn't do that. I had to spend all my money, stay there all night, and drink all the beer. I, little things like that are what helped me to realize what was really going on inside of me. That I, that one, that I was alcoholic, and two, that my life had become unmanageable, right? I could no longer manage. I could no longer manage my finances. I could no longer manage how much I drank. I could no longer manage the decisions I would make. I mean, I was drinking and driving. That's, that's kind of what ended up, ended me up here and recovery but i i made no sense and to me that was like i made all the sense and that was what i was gonna do and i was gonna live my life because this that's what living was and it never was not for me maybe for some people you're still hanging out there you're an alcoholic but you're still partying and, and it's good and it works that's awesome and maybe you don't drink at all and you have a great time everywhere you go man that's that is awesome too. Uh, for me, I'm just, I guess I'm somewhere in the middle, really. Not really, because I don't really drink and I, and I'm not that normal that I could necessarily go out all the time and have a good time. I mean, I have to, um, I mean, I can. I can't really do that without drinking, but it takes an effort because if there's, a normal person doesn't obsess over somebody drinking over in front of them, like an alcoholic might, right? A normal person doesn't um, doesn't just do, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, a, a normal person might might take a puff off, off a joint and be good. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. So I'm not normal, but I can today. I have the freedom to be able to go out and have fun and, and, not, be, and not have to take a drink. I have to take a drink. So I'm excited that I get to do that. I'm excited that what I have learned from recovery is is that through the process, I mean, I've been able to like learn so much about myself, the good and the bad, right? In the fourth step, we talk a lot about doing that personal inventory. And I got, I have, I'm on an inventory right now. I got, a, I got two people on there that man, they just keep. I'm not with them anymore. I don't talk to them anymore, but they just keep showing up in my relationship. So I have, um, I'm doing an inventory right now, four step. <laughs> because I, because that's what the solution is for me, is the steps. I, I'm in the four step. I'm writing everything down. And um, something comes up, I'm adding to it. I'm adding to it, right? And uh, and I want to get healed, man. I don't, I'm, I'm kind of done with having these relationships that are so toxic and dysfunctional whether they be at work or down the road or or you know my personal life or with my family that you know my family that i have left i don't be no toxic no to i don't be toxic i want to be negative i don't want to be unreliable or or without integrity or never shows up or says he's coming but he doesn't or he gets here and he's all drunk and messy like i used to be that person and i don't want to be that person no more so I'm grateful that I have today the freedom to be me. Because I still have my quirks. I still do things that get on people's nerves. But man, I am like a pretty good version of myself compared to who I was when I got here. And what's even more different about me now is that I care. I care what other people, I care what, you know, what my... What my lady friend thinks, I care what she thinks. I do. I care about her. So, you know, maybe maybe I do need to pull up on certain things. Maybe I do need to be less wasteful. Maybe I need to do, be more frugal and save some money. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. It's a hard decision because I have a good life. And 
I'm not into, I'm not saying she has a lack mentality. I'm, I'm not saying that's lack mentality. I said, I'm not used to living life that way. And, uh, but is it worth it? Is it worth it to, to be able to hang out with my girl? Yeah, it's worth it to me. It's worth it. Do I need to be careful not to lose myself? Yes, I have to be careful. Because, because I really love who I am. It's just it. I have the freedom to be me. I never had it. I have it today. I don't want to lose it. Does it mean I can't like, you know, like, hey man, maybe, maybe I change it. You know, at work, at work, I never do my job exactly the same every single day. There's always something different. I either do this different or I do that different or I do this instead of this. You know, I do it a little bit out of order. I, I do something different at my work every single day. I don't ever do it the same. You could follow me around for a whole year at work and I will, I, you, you'll notice I'll never do the route the same twice. It's always different. Always. But I always get my job done. And I always do it really good. And I always get back on time. And, I, and I'm great. I'm good at it. So I can understand, I can, I can like tone some stuff down, you know, maybe make it, make a little adjustments here and there, um, to save a relationship. Hell yeah. It's worth it. It is. It's worth it to me. I was thinking about this today and, and, and I don't want to make it really long, but I was thinking about this today. So when I first came into, uh, recovery, right? And I didn't come because I wanted to come. I came because I had to come. I was on, I, I, you know, Judd says, you got to go to, you got to go to AA, man. And he says, but don't worry, just go twice a week. Make, just make sure you get signed because I'll ask for that. And I said, sure enough. So I started going, first I started going once a week. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't ready to stop. And I didn't know what, what it was about. And, the, and I had, I was like, well, I got 30 more days. I could take my time. I'll just tell them something happened. I'll just lie. But eventually, you know, I stayed there long enough and I started realizing I like what was happening. I wasn't doing much work, but something was happening. And, um, and I remember once, once I had enough clarity in my, in my mind from not drinking so much, they kept saying, are you willing to go to any lane to get it? Are you willing to go to any lanes to get it? And I'll be like, sounds difficult right and so but I remember the day when I was like you know what I want I want that I want, I want to be sober I want that I want that what they say that I have that they have and I want to be sober so then I made the decision to stay sober and just on this the decision right so there's parts in the book that says that you, the decision is, is good it's a really good start but only the only way to get true sobriety is to take action <laughs> So I didn't take action. I just made the decision. And then about three months in, I was like, whew, man, I was feeling the powerlessness. I was like, oh, my God, man, I, I want to, oh, man, I need a drink. Because people, they don't act right. <laughs> um, so then, um, you know, I had my first spiritual experience. I came to believe in a higher power. And then I turned it, I started to, I decided I was going to turn my entire life over to him. You know, my, my, I didn't know it then, but what it really, really meant, but to turn my life over meant that I would turn my, my, my past, my, my present and my future, all of it. I would turn it all over to, to God, including my, my will, my mind. Right. And then, uh, so I made a decision got a sponsor and I started doing the work I started doing the work and I needed to do the work for me and today I, I was listening to a podcast and when I was thinking about this relationship that that I'm in and I was thinking like wow 
Chris, are you willing to do the work? Like, do you want to do the work to have like a really good relationship? I mean, what, I mean, are you willing to go to any length? Because they were saying on the podcast, they were saying that that marriage is not a compromise. It marriage is marriage is a way of saying I trust you with my stuff and i was like what it sounds backwards it sounds backwards so backwards but the more i listened to him the more it made sense i was like i know that is it's like when i made this the decision that i was willing to do anything to get sober and it's like because are you willing to do anything to be in this relationship and i don't mean like bad stuff right I don't mean like crime. I don't mean like selling drugs. I don't mean like abuse. I don't mean any of that. I mean like I'm not for that. But if it's going to help us, yeah, I'm for it. Like let's do it. Like where we got to move? What do we got to do? We got to we got to switch job. Let's go. Let's go. You know, we got to You what? I mean like I'm down for it. Like I'm so down for it. Um but with that, with all the good comes the other stuff, the, the, the not bad, not bad stuff. I'm not saying with the, the, with the good comes the bad. It's like, no, it's those times when something happens and I'm thrown off beam. And the cheery person that I was five minutes ago now is like pensive. And now is in his thoughts and now has something going on. And now is trying to process. So now it's taking him a while to get back that's me right that's how i get some I man i could be like laughing and cracking up one minute and next minute i'll be like okay that, that was kind of strange okay whatever and then i'll be like okay and i'll be like whoa man i guess like oh it's getting serious like oh like they're serious like they're pissed off i was like oh and and uh and then i and then i and then i internalize it so then and and it sounds like a lot of in my opinion, my personal opinion, it sounds like a lot of psycho babble, or psychotherapy, psych, all that stuff. But the truth is, it's what it is. Because there are some stuff that I still haven't healed from. Even though I have the freedom to be myself, myself comes with some stuff that I got to deal with. And that's okay. That's another kind of freedom. You know what? This is where I went when, when that happened can look at it i can i can heal from it and i can move on that is some really true freaking freedom instead of being trapped instead of being um uh, instead of being helpless instead of being victim mentality instead of being hopeless instead of blaming other people i could look at that stuff and be like whoa okay and then work on it and then be like okay okay it's getting easier it's getting better and the test is when it happens again will i react the same will i feel the same will i sound the same will it make me feel like it made me feel no nah. if i'm healing it's not it's going to be different that's part of the process it says right here that i am going to know a new a new freedom and a new happiness because when the other person's acting crazy or ratchet or does something, maybe they're just being themselves too. And they got me, I'm over here like tripping about who knows what. Has nothing to do with them. But here I am, right? I have that freedom that I could work on it. When before I didn't know what was going on with me. I didn't know I was alcoholic. I didn't know my life was unmanageable. I didn't know there was a solution. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't even care about God. You know, there's a lot of things that I came with that i that i don't have anymore the will people say will people call me out and be like that's not true yeah heck yeah they'll call me out they'll be like well if this if this then why this and if this well then why this and if this then why this because <laughs> it's a process people it's a process We'll never be perfect. We're just human beings doing human things. And guess what? Things gonna happen. 
Just because I got recovered doesn't mean I got perfect. Just because I'm in the steps doesn't mean that I'm going to get everything. You know, there's like, it's a process. And the, the deeper I go, the more that I heal. And only certain people can take me there. I get that today. Certain people were put in my life to take me there so that I could heal from that. Right? Do they stay? Not most of them. But do they pass? Are they pass? Do they pass by? Yeah. I don't like that they leave, but I know today that they were here for a reason. Maybe their job is done, um, and and it's time for me to to be okay with it and to move on. But um, I don't even know. I think we. I think I kind of got off topic because I was thinking about relationships too, right? And about I remember being at work and thinking like, man, this is like this is like. Being in a relationship, being in a relationship is like being in recovery. Am I willing to do the work? Am I willing to do to take the steps to acknowledge, you know, when I'm wrong to to work on my stuff so I don't keep repeating the, the same mistakes? Am I willing to? That's what I was thinking about. So in our in our in our meetings. Uh, usually we don't we don't cross talk we don't overshare right we don't if some we don't share directly so if somebody shares something I'm not like trying to fix them and I'm not talking over them and I'm not calling I'm not judging them or calling them stupid well today when I was listening to this podcast it came to me I'm like you know Chris when you're other when your better half is like saying something don't be judging her don't be don't be don't be cutting her off. Don't be trying to prove her wrong. Just listen to her. You listen to your people in your meetings all the time. You give them all the space. You even hug them afterwards. You give them a napkin when they cry. And I, and I said, you, you need to give your person that same space, that same respect, that same uh, love. So this program has, it, I mean... It started off with me not picking up a drink, and I'm so grateful I haven't drank, man. I would be a total mess. My life would be in shambles again, and I guarantee nobody would want to be my friend. I am a horrible drunk, but even when I wanted to stop, I couldn't. I needed something, and I and I found it in, in, in recovery. I found That's why I found it. And so why don't... Why, um, I found it, and, and that's like... I don't, I don't know how to quite uh, say this last part, but I ain't got to do it forever. That's the truth. I don't have to do it forever. But I choose to do it forever. Why? Because I believe that somebody out there needs the hope. That somebody out there needs to hear that they're not alone. Somebody out there needs to hear that I too, my life was a mess, but it's not anymore. Somebody out there needs to hear that I am having the freedom to, to be me, the best me, that I love me. I hated myself when I got here, and I really, really love myself today. I need somebody to hear that. I hope that somebody would hear that. Because it's a message of hope and recovery that we get to help people who are, we've been there already. We get to help out of the pits. And I, that's what that my passion, I have a passion for the for the for the people who just get in and just their first day. And just because they're so hopeless, they're so torn up, so broken. And they keep coming and they keep coming and they keep coming and start getting rebuilt. They start taking a bath and washing their teeth and, I mean, brushing their teeth and washing their clothes. And then they, man, then they get, they start wanting to go to school and work out. And my God, before you know, you have like these GQs, these supermodels coming into the meeting and be like, yeah. I'm so and so. I was like, God, <laughs> damn. And that's impressive. That's impressive. I love to watch people go through uh, early stages of recovery. It is so amazing. It's such a journey that I get to, even if I don't say anything to them, even if they never say anything with me, to watch them recover. It's like, wow, what an amazing journey. And I feel the same way with couples who make it through. I feel the same way with marriages that, that make it that were falling apart that were almost divorced you know I I'm really big on that 
mostly because when I get married, I want to be able to do that. I want to marry a person who who's willing to work, work do the you know work on it when things aren't going wrong, right? When we're too stressed out, when we haven't shown a lot of love for each other. I, I want to I want to be with somebody who works on it. So therefore, I encourage people who are married who are married and not doing too good to maybe work on it. Go to counseling. Start communicating. Get on your knees and pray. Get rid of your pride and ego. I, I, I used to think that was like so weak, right? For me to ask a girl to not leave. For me to, um, for me to be like, oh, it's my where the highway. Oh my God, I. <laughs> The first time I said that to my counselor, and she said, that was selfish. I was like, what? She said, that's selfish. Who says my, my way or the highway? And I was like, I don't know. Everybody I know, she's like, yeah, everybody knows selfish. <laughs> so I don't say that anymore. <laughs> Not just because it's selfish, but because I don't want to. I like, I like the trudge. So folks, uh, let me not bore you anymore. I hope that I didn't. I really love spending time with you. I'm excited to be almost one year. Um, I I will pray that somebody, who whoever needs to hear my content will hear them. And that whoever needs to reach out will. And that wh whoever uh, is out there struggling, no, you're not alone. We are here with you. I am here with you. Um, if you're in recovery and you think that, man, you should be perfect by now, I will say you are. You're perfect. For where you are, you're perfect. But um, if you want to fine-tune, absolutely. Go right ahead. Work the steps. Call your sponsor. Process your thoughts. Get into some healing. Find some videos that work for you. Find something. Something that will speak to you and be like, whoa, I needed to hear that. Wow, that is amazing. Or whatever. I don't know, maybe you're not as dramatic as I am, and, and that's okay. I, I'm, I'm not proud of my my, my drama, but um, it is who I am, and I'm free to be me, and I'm so grateful for that. Alcoholics Anonymous gave me more, more than I could ever think or imagine. I mean, it is turned my life around 100%, and, um, and I'm so grateful for it. And folks, Keep tuning in, share, like, comment, all of it. And we'll see you again soon, hopefully tomorrow. Bye.